Hey friends, this is Tig again with another reaction video. And today we're going to be talking about men giving up, basically. Now, there's a couple of videos that I want to uh, go over uh, to talk about it. And I just wanted to say, I grew up in a time where they told you to, you know, work hard and be successful and you'll be rewarded. All these things. Of course, this is before social media exists, computers, all these things, right? It was just as, at a certain age, you was expected to get out there and start working. And I'm talking about men, right? Because I've, I've been doing a lot of videos about a lot of the stuff women are going through. But today is only going to be about men. So it was always these high expectations that men had to meet. We had to go out there, get a job. And then, you know, then we have to be successful at that job. Then we got to make money, investments, real estate, all these things, right? And then, and then you're rewarded by having a wife that love you and children that love you. Okay. And you'll be able to buy a house, a car, all these things. These are the things not only you would expect it to do, but you figure at some point you will be able to do it, right? You'll be able to be successful. If you do the right things, if you follow the rules, if you do everything you're supposed to do, you were to get rewarded in the end. But unfortunately, that is not happening today. And a lot of men are now going online like this gentleman right here. are talking about how men are depressed. How men aren't getting dates or getting married or making money on all these things, right? Now, I, I, a lot of people make fun of women. I think I might be included in that. Where women are going online, crying, complaining about, you know, can't take a vacation, can't afford rent, can't get a house, all these things, right? Mainly women, mainly liberal women, okay? But now we, it seems we have a man doing it now. And I, I, I remember making a comment saying that, you know, all these women doing this, but men would never go online and start whining and complaining about, you know, that they can't get anything or make anything. You know, they'll just go out there and do it. But I guess I was wrong on that, okay? Because we do have a couple of men who are talking about their struggles. Now, I'm not saying that I don't take it seriously. I take it seriously with the women and I take it seriously with the men because this is becoming a serious problem right now, a serious problem for everybody. You know, I know people say the elites are doing all this and that, but they got their own problems too. Don't think because they got money, they don't got problems. We're talking about mental problems. We're talking about family problems. They, they generally got the same thing, but they're able to distract themselves with money. I always say, seek God, seek Jesus Christ to help you through the difficult times and the good times. But some people decide to do it on their own and then that's the struggle. All right, so let's go ahead and get into this. But before we do, please like, subscribe and share this video. And don't forget to hit that notification bell. That way, you know, whenever we come out with new videos. OK. All right. Let's get started. You know, men are, men are giving up. More and more men are giving up in today's world. You know, they're, they're giving up on, on women, on dating, on careers, connections, friendships, the world. They're just giving up, man. Now, it's interesting a man like this would uh, be saying this because normally... And it's just a fact. White men are generally seen as, you know, more popular, you know, not only in the United States, but also around the world. You know, a lot of Asian women, if they decide to hook up with somebody other than Asian men, is usually white men. And they were always at the top of the food chain in a way. OK, now, many people are upset about that. And those are the people that usually got jealous or whatever or want to scream racism. Then there was other people that just wanted to go out there and make their own money. I usually use uh, successful people as motivation for me to go out there and get what I want. OK, me sitting around just getting mad and pissed off and complaining about these people. Only time you will hear me saying something about it, if they are doing something to keep me from getting what I want like manipulating the system and destroying everything and keeping me from getting it. Then you might hear me say something, but me just being jealous over somebody because they have something. That's a different story. I, mean, I don't think men should get jealous over things like that. They should go out there and do their best to try to get as much as they can. OK, but again, a, a man that looks like this, you wouldn't think he'd be on social media complaining about things like this. OK, because he would be considered a, a, a attractive a young man who most women would want to be with. But now something's motivating him 
to come online and complain about it. And that showed you right there, man. And I remember we used to say this when, um, uh, when I was younger, uh, there was like black people talking amongst each other. Right. I would say when it hit the white man, that's when, you know, it's bad. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You you know what I mean? Okay. If, if you, if you're a minority, you know what I'm talking about. Right. And I'm not trying to make this a race thing either. Right. But I'm just saying, that's what we used to say. You know, when white me when white people start complaining about the system, then, you know, it's bad. Okay. Then you can officially say it's bad. All right. Let's continue. And seems like it's getting worse in that regard and it is because more and more men are doing it maybe maybe there needs to be a reframe of it though maybe it's not so much giving up maybe it's more waking up more and more men are waking up to the realities of the world and then well i have to agree with them but they're kind of shoving it in your face they're pretty much making it plain before they were trying to sneak it in but now they're pretty much letting you know you ain't worth it until like a war comes up or you need some kind of hard labor. That's when men are valuable. That's why they're having a lot of these male migrants come in the country to, you know, that get them to work because a lot of Americans don't want to do a lot of these jobs. So they figure they can do that. But what they don't see is what they're going to underestimate is the fact that a lot of these migrants are going to want that American dream, too. And unfortunately, now, according to most people, it doesn't exist. Deciding that. It's too much bullshit out there, and they don't want to. They don't want to play that game anymore. The ones that tend to succeed, uh, those who have almost like little to no self-respect, morals, integrity, they're willing to kiss ass and do shameful things to get ahead. They're willing to fuck people over, put themselves first, put others down. Well, that seemed to be the thing. I mean, look at Diddy right now and a lot of the people in Hollywood come and find out they're doing all kind of uh, scrupulous stuff. You look at like uh, Congress people, all these people, man, you find out that they are not intelligent. They're not smart. They're not making the right decisions. They out there lie, cheating and stealing. <laughs> That's what they do it. You know, and the women are doing it, too, because they learn and shoot. Why should I be honest when I can just lie? All this stuff is in the Bible. All you have to do is pick up the Bible and God said they will be doing all these things. You know what I'm saying? You know, forget, right? You know, let's just get what we want. And I don't care how we get it. And more and more people are sought to subscribe to this kind of thinking, unfortunately. So the people that actually just want to live a decent, nice, honest life is becoming harder and harder for people like that. And it makes you feel depressed. It makes you feel down. You know, it, it affects everybody, including me. It affects everybody. To see a lot of this stuff in the world. I had a bike. <laughs> I had a bike. I was at the mall. And not, you know, I chained my bike up. I put a regular, you know, one of those cord type um, security locks on it. Somebody ripped it off and took my bike. Just took it. You know, the police act like they didn't care. The people in the mall, they didn't bother to look at the cameras. Or the, cam the cameras was positioned in a way where, you know, over the bikes, it didn't really capture anything. It's like. They didn't care. My bike was just gone. That's it. Not really, really like that bike. Okay. But they stole it, <laughs> you know, and nobody gave a crap. So I was out of bike. You know, I, I kind of knew it before I talked to the police and before I talked to the people at the mall, but I had a feeling it was gone. So I tried to t take a positive attitude and I prayed to God about it. And I said, God, hopefully this person that stole it really, really needs it. And I've seen somebody else on another video say that too, as well. Because it's at a point right now, man, can you really hold on to anything these days? <laughs> you can't, man. It just, it just, people just right now just want to be dishonest, and they feel they feel like they that's the that's the road to success. Now it ain't about being honest, cause they they watching our leaders act this way, so they like why should we be honest? But unfortunately, you can't touch the leaders though, because they make rules that you can't touch them. But when you doing something wrong, they'll come after you. Most definitely. And I'm talking about, you know, taxes, fraud, all these stuff, man. They do not play. They're not going to allow us to do the same thing that they're doing. Nope. Down. And uh, a lot of those people who are waking up, they're not that way inclined. They have morals. They have integrity. They don't want to play that game. They want to they want to kiss us. They want to look themselves in the mirror and. See someone they respect. So they check out. 
and they give up, they give up playing the games. And I don't blame them. I don't, I don't blame them. Yeah, I totally have to agree with this man. It's like being honest, being faithful, uh, being hardworking. They look down on you. They look at you as fools. I remember I was um, working with this dude, right? And I was doing maintenance. I've done maintenance before. He was like a, the lead in maintenance. Some black guy I used to work with. And he was watching one of the, the house cleaning girls clean something off the floor. Now, you can see the girl was working hard. She was trying to get the stain off the carpet or something like that, right? She was working really hard, kind of like she was almost sweating. And so he just looked down on her like she was nothing. He had this expression on his face. And I was thinking, why is he looking at her like? I mean, like disgust. That's That was the look he had when he was looking at her. So later when we got back to the office, I was like, why were you looking at her like that? He said, I can't believe she's slaving herself like that. I was like, well, she working hard, man. I mean, that's a good thing, right? No, because this dude was not the most honest person in the world, okay? He believed in getting what he wanted through any means necessary. So he was looking at her like, why are you working this hard? And it's almost like made him sick. And I, I feel like a lot of these people wondering why you being honest. Why are you lying like the rest of us? Why you ain't stealing like the rest of us? Why you ain't doing all these evil things to get ahead just to get money? Why aren't you selling your soul? Why aren't you selling your body to get what you want? Look at OnlyFans. Look at these women going to places like Dubai's Escorts. They wondering why you're not going to sell your body and do whatever you can to get that money. And because things are getting really, really tight with everybody, the money, the inflation, all these things is going on right now. They ain't gonna start, people gonna start considering these things. Cause I've seen honest women actually say stuff like, you know, I do see the lure of people doing OnlyFans. And when you got people that don't want to do these things starting to talk about it and it's starting to look good to them, that's bad. Because the last thing we need is a, a civilization full of dishonest people. A country or a state or whatever cannot run that way. But it seems that's the direction we're heading in. Um, so I'm at this, I'm at this nice spot, right? And just chilling, you know, having a good time or whatever. And I just noticed something because this ain't the, this ain't the first spot I don't been to that I don't notice this happening at. But, um, and the spot I'm at right now, it has, I would say about a, about a thousand thousand people in here about a thousand people guys and girls but one thing i've noticed man is that guys is not approaching women no more guys is not approaching women no more they just not doing it i seen this group of guys that was standing right here talking to each other amongst themselves and then i seen another group of women that's over here amongst themselves amongst each other talking to themselves neither one of them was talking to each other the girls were yeah it's um before you go into more explanation about this, I heard, because I don't go to clubs anymore. I go to restaurants with bars in them and things of that sort. That seemed to be the thing now because people are saying clubs are trash now. And I think people still go to clubs now, but it's just not as fun. I heard this girl, she was describing something. She was saying that, you know, clubs are trash. All people do is sit in the club, looking on their phones. Nobody dancing with each other, talking with each other, nothing. Girls hate it when they when you can't buy them anything. They don't go to clubs to just buy their own drinks and just not be looked at. That's exactly what they go to clubs for. They say they don't. They, they say they go to clubs with their friends or they just go to the club just to dance. But to prove my case, some person, some woman, I think, opened up a club just for women. I'm not exactly sure if it was lesbian or whatever, whatever it was, right? But I think it was mostly a lot of straight women there. Because I've seen lesbian bars. I've been in lesbian bars before. So they, you know, they don't have too much of a problem just um, being in there. They expect a certain type of masculine female to buy them drinks and to give them attention, whatever, right? But women, on the other hand, who are like straight, they want men to watch them. They want men to buy them drinks. They want men to dance to and talk to and flirt with and all these kind of things. But some women open up this, um, this bar. I don't know if she was lesbian, whatever it was, right? But it was just for women, just for women, just like um, some other women <laughs> opened up some dating app just for women. Like I say, I'm not exactly sure these days if they just want 
lesbians to come to these things, right? But either way, a lot of women say it was boring. They hated it. You know, they had to pay for their own drinks. They didn't want to do all that, right? What's the point? They want men and, you know, they want men to treat them like princesses. They want the people to buy them drinks, to flirt with them. Even when they turn them down constantly, they still want somebody to flirt with them or whatever. And it's boring and nobody wanted to do it. So men right now getting to the point where, you know, okay, you just playing games. I call you. We, we you don't respond back. Uh, you expect me to buy you tons of drinks, expensive drinks. Now I would try, I'm, I'm giving you an example. I went to this club. I remember, and some woman wanted me to buy her a drink. So I've been a gentleman. So whatever, you know, whatever that means these days. And she went for the most expensive drink. Of course I was the last drink I brought her, of course, but that tells you right there. She had no feelings for me or respect. None. Okay. So when, uh, fellas, when a woman, uh, when you offer her a drink or she asks for a drink and it's, it's the sign when she asks you for a drink is a bad sign anyway, but for some reason I was trying to be a gentleman regardless, but either case, and she, she uh, expect you to spend top dollar on that drink. She don't have no respect for you. None. And she's not trying to get with you. Even if she give you her phone number or her social media account, she ain't trying to check you at all. So that's a lesson right there that I've learned. Because back in the day, man, you can you can mess with women. They can either want to talk with you or they didn't most of the time. But the games these days are like incredible. And a lot of these guys don't want to play that game. And when I was in Germany, um, I asked the girl I was with, she was German. And I was like, why is, isn't the man uh, talking with the women? And they were like, well, the women have to go after the men. Now, I'm talking about back then when I was in Germany. I don't know what's going on right now in Germany. I mean, they got a lot of problems right now. So I'm not talking about now. I'm talking about when I was there. And that was years ago. But then the women had to chase the guys. And it's becoming this way. And I believe that's where we're going. The women are eventually going to have to start approaching men now. And look, the, the, the F boys, the really good looking guys, the high value men, right? They're not going to chase you. Women do the chasing when it comes to these type of men, right? But they expect somebody to chase them. And it's usually somebody they're not really all that interested in. They just want to be chased. You know, so they can so they can feel good about themselves. So they can go and approach one of these guys that's not checking them. And hopefully he'll choose them. And I'll go back to that. Because they will always, you know, calling these um, conservative women pick me's. But they pick me's too. They pick me's. When talking to the guys, guys, the guys weren't approaching the um, girls. As a matter of fact, the girls was like kind of like they was ho they looked like they was hoping to be approached, but the guys was completely ignoring them, man. Completely ignoring them. And like I said, this ain't the first spot I done been to where I done noticed this phenomenon. Like it's happening everywhere. It's happening all over. And I think I think I know what's, why it's happening. Um. I think it's happening because, you know, guys is like awakening to the truth. You know what I'm saying? Now, I agree with that. But I'm, I'm going to give you, I'm going to tell you all something what I think. And I could be wrong, but I'm going to tell you what I think. Now, you heard of the passport bros, right? You know, you can't find a girl in America or the West. You go to other places like Asia, whatever, right? I believe there's actually people that's watching passport bros and watching what men do. Because they always, you see CNN and all these companies always asking opinions about who you're voting for. Why don't you talk to girls? They always watching us, even though they try to act like they're not watching us. They constantly watch us constantly. And all these uh, philosophies that they have in the West, they trying to spread it to anywhere you go, anywhere you go. You go to Asia. OK, let's go ahead and start pushing this crap in Asia because China is going through that right now. The women are so westernized that they don't they don't want they. It almost as if they worse than the Western countries, man, because you got to have a house. You got to have a car. You got to at least make a million in, in many of these women's eyes just to be able to talk to them. Even though Western women are ridiculous, I can't imagine him to do that. And then you when you do finally get married, you got to buy all these gifts for the family members and all this other stuff. I mean, it's crazy, man. It's crazy, but it's spreading everywhere. And men are just trying to find a corner of the planet to be able to talk to somebody, you know, like, do you really, really care about me? And do you really want a family? 
Let's just live in a corner of the world somewhere where we can just live out our lives together and be happy and raise our children the way we want to raise them. But, you know, all these feminists and all these other people, they're not going to let you do that. They're going to go everywhere you go. It might not spread as fast, but it's going to spread. That's a definite. So I really, really feel sorry for more of the young people. The guys are hitting 18 right now. I really feel sorry for you, man, because by the time you get out there or have any money, if you're going to have any money to go out there and have a good time or whatever, or try to find your wife, you're going to be close to impossible. A lot of guys is waking up everywhere, you know, and they starting to realize that like for a long time, like women have been not all of them, but like for the most for the most part, most women have been, you know, misusing guys for, for resources, for finances, um, you know, for personal gain. And the guys are getting to a point now where it's like they're not taking it no more. They're not taking it no more. They're not about to invest into a woman who who they giving they all to, who they giving the world to, who they going to work for every day, you know, slaving at the job, trying to trying to trying to make an honest living to take care of this woman that he loved going back to the way the world's looking at people that do work hard to try to be honorable or faithful or whatever they look down on these people they that's why women love the f boys they because these guys don't care they'll lie cheat and steal whatever right they i've seen guys like that would try to go in women's purse when they won't look in these guys that they are attracted to They'll feed her full of drinks and junk or whatever, if they even pay for them, you know, but either way it goes, they'll do whatever they got to do to get what they want. And then they're done. And then they move on. These women just devastated. So they, a lot of the time they get pregnant to try to trap them, but then they can't even trap them. It, it don't even work like it used to. I don't know if you remember the movie Officer and the Gentleman, right? Back in the day, they would warn the sailors uh, and, and officers or whatever. Be careful. These women will try to trap you. And a lot of the times back in the day, if you get pregnant by a, a man, a man will do the honorable thing as they tell you to do is to marry her. And that's that's the way they trap men. But not these days. These guys not, don't care. Oh, I got a baby on the way. It's, 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 a, it's a small paragraph on TikTok or X. Oh, yeah. By the way, she having a baby, my baby. She my new baby mama now. Like it's not even a big deal. It's like whatever. And these women go on there, they show their bellies, and they be all happy. Deep down knowing that these guys didn't care. They might at some point possibly care about the child, but they don't care about her. They they never meant to do it. Some guys do, but they never meant to do it. And like I say, with this kind of atmosphere and the way things are, men don't want to work hard anymore because they're starting to realize, like he said, they're starting to realize the truth. That, you know, it doesn't matter how hard you work, how honest you are or whatever. These women don't care and they will use you. And that's in most cases, not all cases, but most cases these days. That's why men are fleeing the freaking country. You can't say it's not a problem when men are literally doing everything they can to get a passport to leave. To, and they, they reason is to find wives. We ain't just talking about sexy. We, we talking about they they're just to find wives. They literally trying to find love. That's how bad it's getting. And doing it for X amount of years and, you know, 10 years and 15 years and stuff. And then all to find out she been messing with somebody the whole time. <laughs> and then, you know what I'm saying? And, and and that's why I think a lot of men now is like not even trying to take that risk to approach women no more. They not even doing it. Um, I've also noticed that a lot of women is not pregnant no more. I done counted. I've been keeping track. I done counted on my fingers. Two women I done seen in the past two months that's pregnant. Only two women. Yeah, I noticed that too. Uh, but these days, they're telling you you don't need no uh, child. Because you're not going to get nothing out of most of these men. Because 80% of the men you don't want to be with anyway. And it's not like you don't get a ton of money if you got pregnant. Now, if you go for like an NBA player or a football star or whatever the situation is, a movie star... Then maybe getting pregnant might be, you know, profitable for you, right? But these women ain't trying to do it. They don't want a hardworking average dude and they don't want to have no baby. They all they all online talking about babies are expensive and children are expensive. They are. So they're not trying to struggle, man. So they like this is the one thing to keeping their legs shut. 
all these years they tell women stop getting pregnant by you know these f boys and having all these kids and all that they ignored it all they ignored all of that now when it comes to finances and they can't get what they want now they saying oh yeah we now we can control our pregnancies now before it was like oh i got pregnant by accident ooh but now all of a sudden now they can really control it <laughs> yeah and it's starting to become noticeable now and that's the reason why we got a lot of people coming into this country with kids and having kids or whatever right because just like china man our uh, pregnancy is going down just like our marriages i don't seen this pregnant now i don't cross paths with hundreds of thousands of people like i only seen two women that's pregnant in the past two months two so women are not even reproducing no more women aren't even women are not even making kids no more yeah, it's uh, it's getting bad now. All of a sudden now, women aren't reproducing. They ain't doing anything. They don't even want to be wives. They struggle to get married. Then they get married. Then they go ahead and get divorced. And and what they really pissed about is, and this is not all women again, but what they really pissed about is, I can't take this guy for everything he got because he can't even get a freaking house these days. He's most men are renting now, so you can't take the house. So what's the point of getting married? So now they're talking about not only not having children, but they're talking about not having uh 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 not getting married. I can't take this guy for nothing because these guys don't got anything. They're renting. They got jobs that they could possibly lose tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? Everything's expensive. Everybody's struggling. Now women don't, you know, before they were like, I want to get married because I want to, I want to have a husband. I want to have children. I want to be in love and all this crap. They, they're always talking, right? And that's the reason why they always pressure men to get married. Guess what? They're not pressuring men too much these days. All of a sudden now the payoff is smaller now. Now you got to run and, and, and go after guys with money. And so they willing right now, many women, not all women, many women are willing to prostitute themselves. Now, at this point, they rather do that than live with an average, honest man that doesn't have a house and can possibly lose, lose his job tomorrow. They rather do that. That's more appealing to them these days. And this is a pathetic, sad shame. <laughs> it's terrible. What, what did that girl say on the, the Titanic? I'd rather be his whore than your wife. This is the men mentality, man, women are having nowadays. They'd rather be an NBA, NBA player's escort than somebody's wife now. They don't see no profit in it. Like I say, man, you can't take a man house if he can't even get a house himself. And they lose all the track. Now they don't want to get married. And all of a sudden, now they don't want no kids. If everything was like men were making money and everything was going great, They'll at least marry them, hoping possibly to take them for what they got, half of everything. But there's no more halves anymore because nobody got anything anymore. Very, very funny, isn't it? But funny in a terrible, sad way. All right, folks. So it started. It's happening. I've been living on my friend's couch for a few days. And this is so weird, you know, being 31 years old and all the things I feel like I've accomplished in my life and all the ups and downs that I've had. And to be in this position just feels crazy. Sleeping. Now, look at this dude, too. He would be considered back in the day a high value type man. Black woman would have went crazy over a guy. Not bad looking, a guy in good shape. But because now that he got to actually sleep on somebody's couch, I'm not exactly sure what his circumstances are. He, they, they will not even give him a second thought. Possibly have sex with him. But other than that, no. Because that's a complete turnoff for women. Complete. They don't want to know you got down times or struggles or anything like that. They don't care about that. You could be the most successful like in your early 20s or whatever. And then something happened out of your control. You lose everything. And you end up on somebody's couch. But during that period while you're on that person's couch. And you're trying to be honest with the woman. That you live sleeping on the couch right now. Instead, instead of her working with you, she let, just gonna look you over and find somebody else. Because right now, when when people are struggling, especially women, women are uh, they're survivors. Probably one of the best survivor creatures on the planet, right? 
because they understand the situation. They're going to do what they, whatever they got to do to survive, no matter what it is. Okay? Love don't have nothing to do with anything. They looking to survive. They're not trying to struggle, period. And if a man, if they see a man struggling, that's a straight up turn off. Now, if she's out having a good time, maybe have a few drinks or whatever. I'm not talking drunk. I'm just talking about a few drinks. She getting that mood. She getting horny. She might date a guy, guy like that, have sex with him or whatever. And there's always that small possibility some type of relationship um, might come from it. That is if he has potential. But other than that, man, uh, she, you know, she'll just have sex with him. And that's it. But then when they back in their right mind, they're looking for that NBA player. They're looking for that accountant, that guy uh, that managed money and all this kind of stuff. It's, 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 it's crazy, man. It, and this is the shocking part. I expected when I when I decided to do a video like this. I expected simps and, you know, guys that look like they just sleep in a um, mother's basement eating che Cheetos and overweight and all this kind of stuff right not really trying to do it but these guys these guys they're considered the good looking dudes man these are the guys that women used to go for in high school yet now they're basically telling a story sleeping on couches man can't get married don't have any money to do anything you know and they out there i'm telling him man things get bad when guys like this are out here talking about these things on the couch not having your own room not having your own things right and this is temporary of course right i'm getting back on my foot things are getting better i have some positive things that have happened like my, my job with you know with my career all right all right this is the, probably the perfect time for him just to stop chasing chicks if he out there i mean you know maybe occasionally but he should focus mostly on getting his stuff together you know for his own sake i ain't talking about just get married or to have kids or whatever just for his own sake and unfortunately, men also got to start thinking about themselves. You know, I just heard some story. Some dude was on TikTok talking about, you know, was, he was in Florida. It was raining hard, storming outside, and he had to put air in his tire. And then so he see this woman in the car with her kid waiting to put air in, in her uh, car. But he told her, I'll do it for, for you. And he did it for, he said, what, like five, six other women that he saw uh, in the car, which is a very nice thing to do, right? But somehow I get the feeling these women didn't really appreciate it. But either case, I don't know. But either case, he was, he said he was thinking, where are y'all men at? Where are your men? Why are you out here in the storming outside, raining hard and all that kind of stuff, and you out here trying to get air for your tire? Where are your men at? The kid in the car, where's the man? But it's getting like that. And it's going to hurt women too. But he should start thinking about getting his stuff together. And then if he does, which I have a feeling he probably will. And when he does, I'm hoping, man, that he's really choosing when it comes down to finding a wife. Instead of him going out there just hooking up with anybody. Because these girls, man, are treacherous. Treacherous. They ignore him now. But as soon as he gets something, all of a sudden, they want to get with him. So you know that not love. It's not love. It's treachery. And then when they lose interest, they're going to walk out and take whatever they can with them. And that's the hunt now. That's the thing what you got to deal with. But right now, this man, um, I'm, like I said, I don't know his situation, but right now he got to sleep on his friend's couch. It ain't no chick or ex-girlfriend or nothing like that. It's generally, it's either going to be your family or it's going to be a friend or something. All right, so that opening scene you guys just saw was actually from about 12 days ago. I ended up staying on the couch for about 16 or 17 days or so. It was really, really tough. And the reason why I'm still putting this video out was, A, at the beginning, I didn't do it earlier because I kept getting so sad and depressed, right? Um, I just moved into my new room. I'll give you guys maybe like a little tour or something one of these days. But tomorrow I'm dropping a full day in the life vlog to kind of show you what my life is like. You know, as you guys saw in the title, you know, living on a couch, 31 years old with three jobs. I'm basically working three jobs right now, and I'll explain those to you guys oh yeah i've been watching videos of that man i'm like i hated working two jobs but two jobs was sufficient the first job is to pay your bills mostly and then the second job is for you to have extra money so you can do things buy things do investments whatever but these days people working tons of jobs man they still sleeping on, on the couch sleeping in a room you heard him he said room he didn't say apartment he said room
<laughs> okay? And the way he speaks, you can tell. He sounds like he probably worked in an office and do finances. He probably went to the gym, spent all that money on lifting weights and exercising. He probably was the kind of guy that wore suits and all these other things, which is very respectful. But now something happened. Something happened. And look, I could be completely wrong, but I have a feeling it might have something to do with a woman. That he's now sleeping on a freaking couch. Because he don't seem like the type that would be doing that. But I don't know this guy. Maybe I'm completely wrong. Maybe he did something he shouldn't have or whatever. And he ended up in this situation. But like I say, I still have a, a, a suspicion, a suspicious feeling that have something to do with a woman. Real quick, it's, you know, I have my in-person training business, my online training business that takes a lot of time. And then I also have my management position at FitStop that I just started as well. So... You know, I'm flying around doing a lot, but I'm doing my best to rebuild my life. And one of the things that inspired me to still put this video out was, A, I had a conversation with my ex-girlfriend and we were talking about how things had kind of gotten better for me and some things that had done well for her. And today I got hit with a bombshell while I was filming my vlog. One of my clients hit me up today and said, hey, Quan, I'm sorry, I'm probably not going to be able to pay you tomorrow for our next batch of sessions because I had some, you know, a, 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 a life emergency, something that happened. I'm not going to disclose what they said, but it really made me maybe like PTSD or shocked me back into those conversations I used to have to say to my ex, like, hey, like this person won't be able to pay for two or three days, so we have to delay this or delay that. And this used to happen a lot. And this is this this client's first time ever having something like this happen. But now that's a that's a red flag right there. And I'm not, I'm not saying there's a red flag on him. And I'm talk, not even talking about his client. I'm talking about the fact he's still talking to his ex girlfriend. Why is he still talking to his ex girlfriend for? Is she keeping in contact just to make sure that when he when he's back on his feet, she can move right back in again? Or she can ask him to move in with her. Why? Why? If she they such good friends, why ain't she having him out? Is she having him out? Why is he living in a room? Why is he still talking to her for it? Like, look, I don't care how well a uh, relationship ends. It's no real reason for you to be talking to a, your ex girlfriend about your problems and about your struggles, cause she don't care. She really don't care. And when I mean by don't care, I don't think. She have any harsh feelings towards him or wish bad anything on this guy. I'm just saying that she can be thinking about her life because everybody out here is struggling right now. She got to think about, you know, if he can't get his stuff together, she got to find another man. This is going to be her priority. And I don't understand why he's still talking to her like she just waiting around for him because she's not. She's going to move on. As soon as she find a better man or a man as equal as he probably used to be, then she's going to go ahead and um, get on that. And that conversation going to stop. You ain't going to be calling her talking about your problems that you're sleeping on the couch and all that. She ain't going to care. Look, I can't talk to you no more. I got a boyfriend. You need to just go ahead and live your life. That's the conversation. That's the last conversation she's going to have with you. Don't get it, man. I don't know why he's still talking to his ex-girlfriend for well, in hopes that he might get back with her. I mean, that's sad, man. That's really sad. But being an independent trainer, that's part of the game. That's part of what happens. And so little things like this are how I got behind before. But now let's compare. To okay, I'm, I'm assuming he's some kind of fitness trainer. Oh, well, he didn't say so. Who knows? And now, the reason why it's not as bad or as agitating, it just diverts a little bit of my plans instead of hurting my bills is I have a full-time job. I have my online training. I have YouTube where, I mean, I'm not really making much money on YouTube, but I have small and larger income streams coming from other angles that are going to help me to be able to pay my bills on time. Like this doesn't affect my bills at all. It just affects some of the things I was doing to help rebuild my life, but it doesn't hurt me, right? So what I've learned in the, you know, 16, 17 days of living on the couch, man, and, and like having no privacy, no, nothing, no space of my own dealing with people coming in and out at all times of day and night is that you have to be grateful for what you have. You have to understand that life is not easy and that when things happen to you, you have to choose to look at them as a positive or look at them as a negative. And I chose to look at living on that couch as primarily a positive because it. it uh, all right, before you get into it, I do agree with him. But people have more stuff now than they had back then when I was younger, you know, so it ain't like we lost all this, you know, so I'm e it's easy for me to not be on my phone all the time or to be on a computer. I usually on a computer when I'm trying to do some work or whatever the situation is. And like I say, it we never had it like they have it now. So they feel like they got to do two, three, five hundred jobs just to keep the things that they have to keep their phones continuously um, on all the time, you know, to be on YouTube constantly. That's going to be a thing with everybody. Men generally look, look, 
I know I'm on YouTube right now, right? But see, I'm not in a situation where I'm struggling like that. You know, I got other, you know, sources of income. It's not just YouTube, okay? And if it was, look, if it was just YouTube, I wouldn't be on YouTube. I'd be doing something else. I'd be trying to make money. You know what I'm saying? And for some reason, and I understand the women do it, which, which, which is, I don't think it's the smartest thing in the world, not unless you're making tons and tons of money. But I think you should be focusing mostly on the other things instead of YouTube. Now, this guy could be just once in a while he posts. I don't know who he is. And he might just post once in a while. Who knows, right? But this is not a job, man. This is not a job, man. Not unless you start making real money. I can't even consider it a real job because I'm not making that kind of money on YouTube. You know, all my other adventures is going on. That's making me money. Now, that you can consider a job or an investment or something like that. YouTube, if you're just starting out or if you just got like 5,000 followers or 10,000 followers, it's not a job anymore. It's not a job until you start getting prom promotions, I mean, not promotions, but people calling you to promote their products or you got some kind of other ventures going on like makeup, you know, women starting companies off of YouTube, you know, off of the clients and people that's on YouTube. And that's probably what he's trying to do, but it's not a job right now. If you're still struggling, living in rooms or on somebody's couch, it's not a job. And you should, excuse me, you should completely focus on the ones you do call jobs, okay? That's your main focus should be. It humbled me. It brought me back down to earth. I went from living in a beachfront apartment, apartment that I wanted my whole life type of thing, to living on someone's couch, right? That's mm -hmm. humbling as hell, guys. Like, it, it's hard. It's, it's that living beyond your mean kind of stuff because that's what they pushed. They're telling people to go remote, you know, to go travel everywhere, to live in these expensive apartments like New York and California. And I'm thinking, what the freak? Do you think YouTube going to last forever? I mean, they literally spend like $4,000 on an apartment, man. You know, I'm like, look, if, look, if he was living this way, making that same kind of money, let's say he was able to afford a $4,000 apartment, then it would make sense. Then now I know he got a goal now, but I think he was probably trying to live that way ahead of time because he had some t certain type of job that was making him a lot of money. So he felt like, you know, and all of us are guilty of that. I'm not even going to lie. I did it too. Living beyond your means. And because now you got more money, you're going to try to match that stupid strategy. Most uh, uh, people that deal in finance tell you, you make more money, try to live the same lifestyle that you're living. And you can be happy about it. Because that's something I had to learn. Because I, I was like, I thought when you make more money, you're supposed to start living a certain type of way, right? But you know what? I got a lifestyle now. And I, I, even though when I make more money and I will make more money, I'm not going to really try to change it that much. It's going to be certain type of changes. I might, like for example, I might, if I travel one day, um, one time in a year, I might travel two times in a year, but I'm not going to be like trying to spend thousands upon thousands of dollars on a travel, right? Or things like that. You know, something that really means something to me. You know, instead of just going out there buying a ton of clothes and, you know, get expensive um, technology and all this other crap. You know what I mean? Stuff I don't need. Something that's going to fulfill my life and make me feel good about things. That's what I'm probably going to spend money on. But other than that, no, I'm not buying these commercials telling you you need a phone every year. I'm not doing it. I'm going to keep this phone as long as I freaking can, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Get a get get yourself a hump day, man. Don't go out there and get yourself an expensive car. Be stuck in those payments, man. Pay off a hump day and just drive that joker. That's a smart way of doing things now. And this is what men need to start learning. And this is what a lot of these young men really need to start learning now. Because, you know, having all that fancy stuff, man, just gonna put you in the poorhouse. Hard to get up in the morning and go in the bathroom and like you don't have your own space, you don't have your own thing. It's hard to like wake up and do that. Um no and I, I knew I was going to have a space eventually, but you know, losing Annie, you know, losing, you know, our oldest dog, Annie, passing away, you know, losing the five-year relationship, losing that person that I thought I was going to marry, you know what I'm saying? And then also losing, you know, my privacy, losing my identity in general and having to relearn all these things in this new space was tough. Yeah, man. Uh, women will walk out that door quick. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? My heart these days, back in the day, man, uh, it didn't happen as much. 
you know, women usually will stick with the family. They'll have children and they'll struggle. And the women will even get a job or some side job to help the family out because the family was the most important thing ever. These women these days, soon as hard times come around, man, they out. But she's still talking to him, though. I wonder why. Okay. He's going, he right now, he should focus on himself and get his stuff ready. And he should cut her off, man. Seriously. Cut her off, boss. If you ever see this video, and if anybody told you I did a video with you in it, take my advice, man. Cut her off. If she's not doing nothing for you, man, look, if she ain't trying to help you, or if you're not, you know, mm -mm -mm with her right now, man, just cut her off. Just cut her off, man. Because trust me when I tell you, you ain't the only person she's talking to right now. Trust. Okay, like I say, women are survivors, man. They're not trying to stick around. If you can't meet their needs, they're going to move on. It ain't like your grandma's uh, life when they try to stick with the family no matter what through the hard times and difficult times and all this other stuff. No, nah, they gone, man. They gone. And men are struggling. You saw all these men that we just did. We just watched in these videos, man. They're going through their own personal struggles with mental health, depression, uh, losing money, losing their livelihood, losing, you know, like he's just talking about, man, losing his freedom, losing his privacy, all these things, man. It's like it's really, really getting hot to the point when men now are getting on freaking social media and talking about these things. That's The struggle is real, as they say. Right. And all of us are going through it. I don't care if your situation is fine right now. It always can take a dot turn. It's probably happened to this dude right here. It probably took a dot turn on him. He probably didn't see it coming. He probably living that great lifestyle with his girlfriend, going out every night, champagne, going on trips. You know, these women love that stuff. And then when everything fell out the bottom, she was gone. But she, she but she's still talking to him, though. I wonder why. All right. That's all I got to say about this. Uh, I really appreciate all of you coming by. Thanks again. This is T and peace.